Hi, it's a pleasure to have Samrat on this show today. Samrat, thank you for speaking to our readers. Uh, Samrat Kishore is a tech risk and cybersecurity professional with 15 years of experience, and he describes himself as a forever student. Welcome, Samrat. Thank you very much, Nidhi, for having me. Uh, it's a big responsibility to be talking to your, uh, your readers. I'm sure they'll love it. So let's start by speaking about ISO. Tell us what is ISO and what are standards? Um, so particularly ISO is the International uh, Organization for Standards. Uh, it sets standards for, you know, largely what I've seen is technology um, and, you know, various. So what are standards? You know, if I were to uh, simplify it, it's basically a consistent and common way of doing things. Uh, that's how you should take it. Uh, a very common example is the USB port. You know, that is an example which I keep giving to a lot of my um, clients or people I talk to. Uh, consider a USB port. So if, let's say, there are five companies making devices and they have to work with each other, a laptop has to work with a with another device manufacturing manufactured by another company, how do, how do they operate together? By the virtue of connecting via USB port or a Bluetooth uh, connection. Now, because the USB port is designed in a certain way, the other company also knows you know, what kind of dimensions, what kind of voltage, et cetera, is available there. And that's how the devices are going to work. So, so that's how standards work. Um, and that's exactly how the companies, and that is exactly why companies are required to standardize their operations. And it's a huge sector, right? There are people who train us on, give us education on standards. There are people who come and do auditing and certification. So it's a large industry by itself, right? Uh, yes, Nidhi. So this, you know, I've spent uh, about 16 years now in, in just doing auditing and standards and compliance. Uh, it's a large industry, both on creation, uh, implementation, as well as auditing. There is also a very large body of work around patenting as well. So a lot of any new work which is done, uh, which can eventually contribute to a standard also goes through a intellectual property protection process where companies say, okay, we've developed something which is first in the world and we would want to eventually contribute to a global standard which others also can comply, but let's first put our stamp on it. So that is where the intellectual property uh, rights also come in, pic in picture. There's a large organization called WIPO, World Intellectual, Intellectual Property Organization, that gets involved. Uh, so these two things go hand in hand and you rightly said it's a large industry. Very nice. So can our uh, readers or can students in general look at standards as a career option? Um, for sure, for sure. It does need a lot of reading. So if people like to read, people who like to read, uh, people who like to think um, and, you know, can make connections across, you know, various things. I think those, those are the kind of attributes that are required to be working uh, on a sound creating a standard. I myself have been on two standards uh, creation bodies where we were trying to define standards for companies to use. So one particular example which comes to mind is, you know, that was called the baseline protocol where we were trying to develop a protocol. Uh, some very large companies like Microsoft, ENY, uh, SAP, ServiceNow, they were all involved in, in co-creating that standard. And, um, and the one thing which came to my mind was, you know, how are these people able to apply something which is already there to create something which does not exist today. So if students want to enter this field, I think this is one common thing that they should think about, that they will get to create new things, but they will have to absorb a lot of information before to do that. So Samrat, most of our readers and viewers are high school students. Academically, is there a recommendation you have for what they should do uh, if they have to look at standards as a career option? Uh, well, academically, there is no, I mean, in my opinion, uh, there is there is no different uh, career path, uh, I would say, I mean, I mean, or qualification, I would say, which is required. There's no specialized qualification which is required to enter this career path um, of standardization or standard, standard or working for a standard body because I've seen people from all kinds of backgrounds. You know, they are technical people, they are lawyers, they are doctors. Um, you know, depends on what standard you're working on. So if let's say there is a standard to be created for medical devices to interoperate, they will need people who are who are from that medical background, who are able to talk that language, write that language, 
there are some technical writers who does who do not even understand the subject matter they what their only job is to make sure that the language is technical uh, consistent across various documentation so you know to give you a low down uh, the last standard that i worked on had about 16 va- variations they had 16 versions and then only we were able to go to a version which we were able to publish to the public so there has to be someone who's ma- able to make sure that the language is consistent across we are calling an apple and apple across these 16 versions so these are the kind of things which come at 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 play you know when you're working for a standards body but you know to answer your question on applications i think these high school students uh, who aspire to enter this industry uh, they just need to make sure and also identify their personality traits that they are diligent on things they are able to document things and they are able to read and absorb information from various sources thank you so if i'm hearing you correctly if if a child wants to go into let's say cyber security iso 27001 yeah uh, they could start with a basic undergrad degree in uh, cyber security or uh, computer science with cybersec and then right. uh, at work move into standards absolutely absolutely so any subject matter that they pick up and it's it's considered as to be like a a degree of understanding of that subject that yeah now i have reached the stage of understanding but i can go ahead and contribute to a standard getting created in that industry lovely thank you and now let's talk about this uh, new standard which is auditing for ai what is it what does it entail and what impact do you think will it have on the growing adoption of ai both by enterprises and by individuals okay that's a very interesting question idi and and you know as all of us are figuring out you know it's the you know the whole ai a uh, phenomena i sh- i should call it uh, you know in the current industry uh, you know the way it is impacting our lives and work um so standard in a way so we are particularly talking about iso 42001 i i recently went through that and what i can say is it's a standard which is setting you know which is giving companies these guidelines you know how do you create an ai management system so while there are tons of ai agents being created or different ways of using ai for different kind of applications uh, there was no standard around how do we govern this how do we secure this um, you know what happens if you know things go awry uh, right if it is used for the wrong wrong reasons are there any guard tra- guard rails so standards like iso 42001 which is actually the first standard in the world uh, on ai management systems it defines you know those guardrails it gives us that you know if you want to develop a system which uses ai which touches lives of your users uh, you should have these five things so it sort of defines step by step on how company should go about defining their system uh, have governance for sure have security for sure while designing uh, you know their systems um, in general if you ask me how it contributes to adoption by enterprises i think very very important step to adoption by enterprises is to get standardized because if let's say i am an enterprise who wishes to choose uh, an ai service provider or an ai platform to integrate with my product i would always want to standardize so that i can compare the between the security and governance etc of uh, you know various platforms same with individual users as well so if i were to sign up for an app and they show me that i am complying to a certain standard you know some something similar to you mentioned iso 27001 something similar to that if i sign up for an app which is a payments wallet for example i go for security first my money should always be secure same applies to an ai app as well if i sign up i should get that comfort looking at that certification that yeah this company has gone through auditing and by virtue of publishing that certificate they are actually coming out as the good guys you know in the ai game where they are not going to misuse my information and 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 sort of uh, uh, or or you know do things with my data which are not which are not published thank you this has been a very very helpful chat both for our readers and for me personally thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us thank you nidhi glad for yourself